Today we're taking a look at new gameplay footage and details of Jedi Fallen Order. And can we just appreciate this for a second? There it is. <laughs> now, believe it or not, it's now less than a month until the release of Jedi Fallen Order. And for those of you who aren't aware, this game is a brand new Star Wars experience created by Respawn Entertainment, also the creators of Apex Legends and Titanfall. It's a third person adventure game that has you playing as one of the last Jedi trying to survive after Order 66, at least sort of. You play as Cal Kestis, a former Padawan who survived the Clone Wars and the fall of the Jedi Order. Cal attempts to stay hidden, but despite his best efforts to remain in the shadows, he's discovered forcing him to flee, but also to attempt to complete his Jedi training in the process. It's an entire original story, and more importantly, it's Star Wars canon and set between episodes 3 and 4. Dare I say at some point we might even cross paths with the Emperor or Vader along the way. I hope so. When the very first gameplay of Jedi Fallen Order dropped, I think it's fair to say that not everyone was on board. I liked what I saw being a Star Wars fan, I thought it looked interesting, but there wasn't a huge amount there to go, wow, I need to play this. And then bit by bit they released more footage and the story and gameplay looked a bit more engaging. Fast forward to this week and a lot of people have now got hands on with the game this week at an event and Respawn have released a 17 minute b-roll and most people seem to be really impressed with what they played at this event which is a fantastic sign. With that in mind though we now have a lot more to go on in terms of how Jedi Fallen Order is actually going to play. What kind of a game is this? Early on there were a lot of comparisons and rumours to games like Dark Souls, not really in terms of the difficulty but more in terms of the timing of your defence and moves with the lightsaber and the force. As well as that games like Uncharted were thrown into the mix and it seems that all of those have some justification and Jedi Fallen Order seems to have taken inspiration from a lot of different games but thrown on a sprinkle of Star Wars on top and that's absolutely not a bad thing in my opinion. So let's talk about combat and movement. In this recent new gameplay we actually know the path that Respawn have taken here. It seems as though Jedi is mainly focused around your defensive play. One of the worries with games like this is that you can just button mash to success without having to really defend but it seems as though Respawn want to ensure that to be successful you're going to have to block and dodge which is how it should be. I don't think you're going to be able to just go all out attack in this game without taking a lot of damage. The design is definitely centered around defensive movement. Parrying, blocking, evading and then taking your moment to strike. There are multiple enemies that you're going to have to face here that have fast moving attacks and are going to require you to dodge, parry or block. Some enemies are also going to have unblockable attacks and they will turn red when that happens. If you don't dodge, well, you're going to get hit. Also, some enemies like your typical stormtroopers have blasters too and you may well be going up against a group of enemies where some of them are firing blasters at you from a distance and the others are pushing you up close with melee weapons. In that situation, you're going to have to try to block or deflect shots while also trying to take out the enemies pushing you and getting close. There's some metagaming here. Now this isn't exactly revolutionary but at least it's got some depth in the combat. You can also parry attacks too so that's worth bearing in mind. If you land a successful parry you're going to get a counter attack move and so you're probably going to use that quite a bit. One of the really cool moments of the gameplay that we saw though is when you're fighting an ATST right in front of your ship. There's something just epic about taking on an ATST with just a lightsaber and of course your force abilities which we will talk about in a second. Catching the missiles midair and throwing them back at the ATST was awesome and what was a really nice touch though is that when you actually down the ATST the pilot clambers out and you've got to take them out as well. It's a nice touch of detail. It's also quite important to remember that whenever we see gameplay like this from a preview event or officially released b-roll there's a high chance that the person playing it has a lot of experience with the game and is likely not playing on the hardest difficulty setting. But I imagine there will be a real challenge here for the veteran players who love this sort of game should they opt for the top difficulty. From what I understand when you up the difficulty enemies are going to take more damage which is a given but also the windows on things like being able to complete a successful parry get a lot smaller and overall the experience is probably going to be a lot 
lot more like Dark Souls difficulty than perhaps it is on the lower difficulty settings. Okay, so what about movement? Well, in Jedi Fallen Order, you're going to have lots of movement abilities at your disposal. There are parts of the game that function like a platformer where you're going to need to transverse the environment, and this could be jumping between platforms or wall climbing, even wall running. It would be wrong for Respawn to not add wall running, right? And there seems to be a lot of Uncharted-esque moments in this game where it comes to moving about the environment. In fact, from the gameplay we've seen, there's a ton of exploration and using environmental objects to move around. You're going to find yourself using your abilities a lot to progress to new areas and also complete puzzles and temples. In fact, this is a huge part of the game and while the combat is good, there's a ton of exploring and puzzles and just taking in that awesome Star Wars environment and lore throughout the game. A lot of the press and YouTubers who went to this event said that these temple puzzle style areas can take hours to complete. One guy spent three hours down there and they're kind of similar to Legend of Zelda or Tomb Raider temples in a way. So next up, abilities the force. Well, Cal has a few force abilities. Some of them you would expect, others maybe less so. One of the more interesting looking ones he can do is the freeze. Cal is able to freeze enemies or blaster shots in front of him in mid-air. It's reminiscent of the opening of The Force Awakens when Kylo Ren does this, and this isn't just an offensive and defensive move though. It's also used to get through the environment by freezing certain obstacles to let you pass through. There was a moment where Cal was sliding down a huge ice cliff and he has to use his freeze ability at the right time to stop what looked like a large cog pulverizing him so he could get through the center. Of course you're going to have the classic force pull and push as well, and I expect these will become better and stronger as you progress through the game. One of the things that wasn't really highlighted when the game was first announced though is that this isn't a standard linear single player experience. From your ship you can move to certain planets depending on what part of the story that you're on. Not only that but each planet can be returned to so when you have new abilities there'll be opportunities to access certain areas that you couldn't get to before giving you more replayability. It seems as though Respawn have hidden a ton of secrets away so there's definitely going to be things hidden here to find. When we first saw the game at EA Play, we were shown only a linear section of the game, but that's not actually how the game functions when you're playing it. When you're in your ship, you can choose where to go, so there's actually a large amount of freedom here. And as you're visiting these areas, you can open up the map and see which routes are blocked by the red doors. Come back later and you may have the right skill to get through there. I imagine this is going to be a massive game. Originally, I thought it might just be like an 8 hour single player story, quite linear, but it appears it's not like that at all. So when you're actually on the planet doing a mission, you can bring up your hollow map, which is a really useful tool to finding out which parts you've already explored and just where to go. There's also meditation points you can find while exploring, and I suppose they act a bit like campfires in other similar games when you can camp there, or in this case meditate and perhaps regain health and spend skill points. In Fallen Order, you're able to use skill points on force powers, lightsaber powers and survival skills. You can even customise the components of your lightsaber somewhat. Now let's just touch on enemies real quick because the game has plenty. You're of course going to run into plenty of variations of your standard stormtroopers, scout troopers, but there are also these new units called purge troopers, sith inquisitors, tomb guardians and plenty of planet specific enemies and big creepy crawlies that perhaps we haven't seen before. Each one of course is going to have different weaknesses and attacks. In the footage it seems like there is a variation of attacks from each of these mini boss enemies and it's great to see some variation there. At the end of the b-roll we even get to see Cal fighting the Ninth Sister. For the majority of this game you won't be alone as you can have a companion with you in BD1 and that's the little droid on the back. If you've ever played the Titanfall 2 campaign you'll know that Respawn can absolutely pull off a brilliant single player campaign with a companion that works and so I've got high hopes for this one too. I mentioned exploring and finding new areas earlier too, and one of the things that you can find are new appearances for Cal. There are no microtransactions in the game though, so these are items that you can find while you move around the world. So wrapping things up, I have to admit that when I first saw the gameplay at EA Play, I wasn't blown away, but now that I've got more information on the game and I've seen the most recent b-roll, learnt all about it, read previews and impressions from people who played it, I have to say I'm impressed and I'm really excited to play this game now. I love Star Wars anyway, but Respawn seems to have taken a Star Wars story and wrapped it up in this package of combat, movement and puzzle solving. It could be argued that nothing about the game is completely original when it comes to the mechanics, but I'm not sure I or 
many others really care, providing they pull off a polished AAA experience here, then the Star Wars theme alone makes it unique. Of course, you've got the Force, you've got lightsabers, all this cool stuff you can do that you might not get in other adventure games like this. And the return of some classic characters too. Color me excited, I can't wait for this one. And that's all for today, folks. Do let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. How are you feeling about Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order based on this new gameplay and information? Let me know down below. And if you enjoyed this video, do leave a like. It really helps me out. Thank you. If you didn't like it, dislike it. That's absolutely fine. Subscribe for more and I'll see you in the next one.